Okay, so in this video we're going to sort of look at shooting pool or billiards, however you want to call it, and we're going to do two-dimensional elastic collisions. So, two-dimensional elastic collisions. Okay. So we have our big equations, uh, m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i equals m1 v1 f plus m2 v2 f. That is conservation of momentum. And then we have one half m one v one i squared plus one half m two v two i squared equals one half m one v one f squared plus one half m two v two f squared, and that is conservation. of kinetic energy. Okay, and at this point in time you're groaning and you're like, oh my god, here we go again. So, we're going to make some very, very, very important simplifications. We're going to say that all masses are the same mass. So if we're doing like pool balls, we're assuming that all the pool balls have the same mass. Uh, so that's going to be one simplification. And the result of that simplification, well let's, let's, well, let's go do the next thing first. And we're also going to say V2I is equal to zero meters per second. So we're going to say that one of our balls is not moving at the beginning of the collision. So one of the balls is stationary at the beginning of the collision. So that allows us some big simplifications. So we're going to say since all masses are the same mass, then all the masses are going to cancel out of both sides of the equation because they're all the same. So every single thing has the same mass. While I'm at it, I can kill those one-halves. And then we're saying V2i is zero meters per second, so I can kill that and I can kill that. And so I'm going to get down to V1, V1i is equal to V2i, V1f, sorry, plus V2f, and I can say V1i squared is equal to V1f squared plus V2f squared. Now, most people can get this if I give them a chance to think about it. Look at this equation and that equation looks very, very much like an equation you know. So hit pause and think about it. That equation looks very much like c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So this means that Okay, so this means that my velocity vectors add to make a right triangle. Now remember, this is because of two really, really, really important simplifications. So we've simplified it with those two simplifications and we get down to this idea that our velocity vectors are going to add to make a right triangle. 
if we don't have that simplification, life gets much more complicated. Okay, so if you watch the supplemental videos on pool, what you're going to find is you're going to say, okay, uh, let's put, here's our corner pocket right there, and we're going to put a ball right here. And we're going to put another ball way over here. And we want to know what we have to do to get this ball into that pocket. Well, let's work it backwards. For this ball to go into that pocket, what we need is we need to draw a line from the center of that ball, which is right about there, into that pocket. Oh. Right there. And then we're going to extend this out like that. Okay. Now, this ball is going to come in, and what we want to do is now here's we're going to add in another little really, really, really important remembrance. So I'll put it right here. Remember. Contact forces act perpendicular to the surface. And we have a way of saying perpendicular to the surface, which is normal. Okay, so contact forces act perpendicular to the surface, which is our normal force. So if I want to get this to go that way, I need to apply a force. Right there is where I need to apply my force. And so if I'm going and so now if I'm going to apply that force with another ball, I have to set it up so that ball is contacting so that we have basically a contact surface like that and the force is acting perpendicular to that contact surface. So I want that ball to basically end up here And so I want to come in on a line that goes like this. So that's the line that I want my green ball to take so that it comes in and it slides along and hits like that. Okay. So now, one thing, if you sort of look at some of the other things that they talk about, is they talk about overlap. So if I sort of think about drawing this line here, if my, so if this red disc has a diameter of two centimeters, I want to overlap by about, well, it looks to me like roughly I want to overlap by half a centimeter. So this is like a quarter shot. So as they, as they sort of line it up in one of the videos, I'm going to want 
approximately one quarter, if I'm sort of hitting this ball, I want approximately one quarter of this ball to overlap with one quarter of that ball, and that's going to give me my proper angle. I'm going to come back in the next video and redo this and, and start doing some more math on this.